According to ABC News, the Oklahoma statewide virtual charter school board voted 3-2 during a special meeting on Monday to accept the Catholic Archdiocese of Oklahoma City and Diocese of Tulsa's application for an online public charter school, which as a public school would be funded by state tax dollars. Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt applauded the board's quote, courage to approve the St. Isidore of Seville Catholic Virtual School. Pause there for a second. The courage, the courage to approve sending taxpayer dollars to a religious institution, the courage to do that. It was brave to flagrantly disregard the First Amendment. It was brave to dismantle the separation of church and state. We applaud you school board in your bravery. Get real, that is insane. But let's continue on <laughs> with this reporting from ABC News. This is a win for religious liberty and education freedom in our great state. And I am encouraged by these efforts to give parents more options, more options when it comes to their child's education, Stitt said in a statement. Oklahomans support religious liberty for all and support an increasingly innovative educational system that expands choice. Following the board's vote on Monday, the American Civil Liberties Union and Americans United for Separation of Church and State said they are planning legal action to quote, stop the unconstitutional plan of opening a non-secular public school, which honestly with this Supreme Court, I, I, you know, and this is the type of case that would get there, I wouldn't hold my breath because this is a Supreme Court that said it was okay for a high school football coach to kneel down and lead the football team in prayer at the 50 yard line while hand in hand with a state legislator. And that that was somehow a private act of prayer. Justice Alito, you absolute buffoon. So I mean, you know, and, and it wouldn't even be the first time that the courts have allowed public taxpayer dollars to flow to religious institutions when it comes to charter school programs. They couldn't stop parents from using the taxpayer money that's going to the, the vouchers that's allowing them to send their kids to a private institution if that private institution is a religious one. Parents are allowed to use vouchers to send their kids to religious schools and the vouchers are funded by taxpayer dollars. But this is an egregious affront to the separation of church and state. Um, and let's talk about what the Oklahoma Attorney General had to say and actually was against the school. Uh, he tweeted this out. It's extremely disappointing that board members violated their oath in order to fund religious schools with our tax dollars. And doing so, these members have exposed themselves in the state to potential legal action that could be costly. And that is a good point because now the, the school board, the state is gonna have to defend itself in court against the onslaught of <laughs> lawsuits that are gonna be brought against them by organizations that are well-funded like the ACLU. Um, but this is, you know, a new breed of public charter school that's being open. And according to the Washington Post, the fastest growing sector of right wing charters combines both a classical quote, virtuous curriculum with hyper patriotism exemplified by charter schools that adopt the Hillsdale 1776 curriculum, which is centered on Western civilization and designed to help Students acquire a mature love for America, Jesus Christ. The Network for Public Education said it had identified 273 open charter schools that offer a classical curriculum and or have websites designed to attract white conservative families with for-profit management corporations running 29% of them. A percentage nearly twice as high as the entire charter school sector. And I'll just quickly remind you of the history of you know the, um, you know, the rapid increase of private religious schools was because it became illegal for schools to segregate based on race. So white parents wanted to find a way and conservatives wanted to find a way that they could get around uh, <laughs> get around desegregation and continue to send their kids to all white schools. And that way was private Christian schools, particularly in the South. Benny, this is a massive this is an egregious attack on on religious freedom, despite what they, uh, you know, the people who pass this want us to believe. 
Yeah, no, most definitely, because the point that you make is very, very excellent, because it speaks to the history of the United States. It's important to understand that the United States really was the world's first experiment in fascism. Like fundamentally, at its core, since the very dawn of the United States, it has always been a fascist country in ideology. It has always been wildly genocidal. It has been incredibly violent. It has used a lot of different tactics of mass terror and vigilante violence to enforce various systems. And as different movements sort of progress things mildly forward, what you ended up having though, like it was this big turning point after the civil rights era where they realized that they could use they could use basically evangelical christianity white evangelicism as a vector to inject a sort of new flavor of white supremacy under the guise of religious freedom so that all of the very overt fascism just becomes a little bit more subtle and they just say oh it's about religious freedom it's about religious rights it's about protecting christian values and things like that and that fundamentally is how we got to the point where we are at now, where they turn the First Amendment on its head. Because to be honest, the First Amendment was never really there to protect like marginalized people. It was never really there to protect like marginalized religious identities. It was always fundamentally there to protect the most powerful and privileged. And we are seeing this that while it technically is breaking the word of the law, the spirit of the law in the United States always been always has been white supremacist fascism. Yeah, exactly, and I think you touched on some important points there. Um, and I, I think what's really concerning to me is, and I mentioned this earlier, but I'll just reiterate it now. The reframing of this as protecting religious freedom, as a victory for religious liberty. When you're right, all it is is a victory for white supremacy, a victory for uh, Christian nationalism. Because it's not, I'm sorry, they, they didn't approve a, a Muslim school here. They didn't approve a, a Jewish parochial school. It's a Christian school <laughs> in a Southern state. I mean, let's get real, this was always what the plan was. And now they have the balance of the court in their favor. So this is why we're seeing this happening now. 